Hey everybody. So we are back to read Acts uh, chapter 1. Now we're going to be breaking this up over two days. So today we're going to be covering verses 1 to 6 and uh, tomorrow we'll finish out the reading. A reminder, the discussion questions are posted in the comment section of this. So make sure to check those out. Uh, now hit pause, read Acts uh, chapter 1 verses 1 to 6 and then come back for our devotion. All right, so um, to start off as a reminder, um, Acts was written by Luke, um, who wrote the Gospel of Luke. And um, Luke, the Gospel of Luke, uh, should be taken as volume one, and Acts uh, should be taken as volume two of these writings. Now, it's believed, it hasn't been proven, uh, but a thought um, out there among theologians is uh, that Luke is actually commissioned by a wealthy man to uh, write both the Gospel of Luke and Acts. And uh, this uh, name of this possible man uh, is stated in verse 1, um, Theophilus. Um, now, he's also brought up in uh, Luke uh, chapter 1. If this is actually a man, because um, it can... Um, also, uh, that uh, word can be someone's name, um, but it also can uh, mean a faithful believer. So um, it's really not clear, um, but it's an idea that's out there. And then uh, when it says in verse 1, it references in my former book. So again, we're pointing back to the Gospel of Luke. And uh, basically, verse 1 continues with Luke saying, I wrote uh, the Gospel of Luke all about uh, Jesus, what he did, what he taught. Um, now, the dividing line between uh, the Gospel of Luke and Acts is Jesus' ascension. Um, now, we got a little taste of it um, at the end of the book of Luke, and basically here's the extended version <laughs> in Acts chapter 1. And uh, it's uh, really neat uh, to understand that the Gospel of Luke is uh, written to talk all about Jesus, uh, what he did, uh, where he went, you know, what he preached and taught, all those sorts of things. Uh, and then uh, Acts follows up with the, well, what happened after that? Uh, what happened after he ascended into heaven? Uh, so it really gives a great history of what the early church um, and did, uh, who the players were, um, and, and how uh, the Holy Spirit then interacted uh, with the new church. So he goes on in verse 3 to talk about how Jesus really did rise from the dead and that there are proofs that he is alive. And those are two words that are very important. So to understand um, back then there was a uh, common idea that ghosts were a very, very real thing. Um, that spirits of the dead uh, could wander the earth wherever, whenever they wanted, interact with people. Um, so when Luke is making this statement, he is addressing this thought process directly. So when he says proofs, he's talking about the fact that Jesus ate with people in their presence. He, uh, you could touch him. He walked, he talked. So and those are all uh, recorded uh, by Luke. So here are the proofs. So again, Luke is referencing back to his previous book, the Gospel of Luke. Um, and he is uh, making sure to show that Jesus is alive and not a spirit. He's alive. He's not a ghost. So this um, cements the idea that, um, or the fact, the truth, that Jesus rose from the dead, which means he is God, 
which means God's um, act of salvation um, has been complete in his death and resurrection. Okay, it was not just death. We have resurrection and he's alive. Um, now, uh, Luke goes on to say in verse 3, he talks about the 40 days uh, that Jesus walked the earth. And it's interesting because Luke is not the only uh, place where, uh, or the person who records Jesus is going about after um, his resurrection. So uh, I'll tell you what those other references are. Um, first off is 1 Corinthians 15. Then you have John 21, Luke 24, which we just read yesterday, Matthew 18, 2 Corinthians 12. Um, now, technically Mark 16, but that uh, part is in a, mm, some would call sketchy <laughs> part because um, Luke uh, 9 uh, verse, sorry, Mark <laughs> chapter 16 verse 9 and following aren't a part of uh, the original uh, manuscripts. Uh, the vocabulary is different. The theology is different. And like I said, it doesn't appear in the original uh, writings. So there's uh, a lot of debate about whether or not that should even be included um, in the Bible. Um, but I thought I would at least make you aware of it. Um, and then the last one is Galatians 1. Uh, now, what's interesting about Galatians 1 is written by Paul, um, and Paul is making his case uh, that he is an apostle, not a disciple, an apostle. Um, and there is a difference between the two. Disciples are um, those that uh, believe in uh, Jesus, right? Um, and they go uh, serve their neighbor. Apostles are um, the people who are given the office of the keys. Um, and we understand that as the forgiveness of sins. Um, so pastors, uh, not me, uh, pastors go and do the office of the keys when we do it in uh, service uh, with uh, what we call corporate uh, confession absolution. So a difference between apostles and disciples. Now, um, this is, again, just a little bit of backstory. But what's interesting is that um, the disciples feel the need to um, fill Judas's role uh, as apostle after um, the resurrection. And uh, they wind up casting lots and the lots fall to Matthias. And so... The disciples say, Matthias, you are now an apostle. However, <laughs> um, I, in, in doing uh, the research for these devotions, um, there are those who think that uh, Matthias wasn't actually an apostle, um, that instead God chose Paul to fill uh, Judas's uh, slot <laughs> as an apostle. Because uh, what we know of apostles, the same way we know of pastors, is that they are called by God. Okay, their authority comes from God. So the apostles um, uh, stepped out of line, uh, some think, by uh, calling Matthias an apostle because uh, the call was supposed to come from God. And one of the things that also sets the apostles apart um, from others is the mm, time, uh, the, the calling uh, from Jesus to these people. And uh, Galatians is one of those parts where uh, Paul goes through and talks about um, basically his interactions with Jesus uh, post uh, resurrection, uh, which uh, is uh, quite important as far as solidifying him as an apostle. Okay, anyway, sorry, <laughs> got off track. So uh, this reading finishes with <laughs> flat out, 
the disciples um, just not getting it. <laughs> um, they talk about, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? So again, we reference back to the psalm that we read earlier, and it talks all about this kingly God. And the difference comes in that the kingdom is not on earth. It is everything. It's heaven, okay? And you find that this is a common thread throughout Jesus' ministry, that they think he is going to overthrow the Romans. He's going to set up Israel as an independent nation. That's going to be just like when David was king and, you know, they have so much power and wealth and, you know, it's just going to be great because they're going to be their own independent nation. Uh, no, <laughs> this is not why Jesus came. This is not what he's about. He is not sticking around to rule on a throne on earth. Um, instead, his throne is in heaven okay um so it's just it's it's one of those it makes me smile uh because even up until the very end the disciples just don't right don't get it um and it's a bit reassuring too because i know that i don't get it um all the time there are things that i am sure that i get wrong um and i guess i'm in good company because the disciples are right there um, so anyway, um, that's our reading for today. Um, there's a lot of background in this one. Uh, so encouragement to read uh, the discussion questions that are uh, down in the comment section. And we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.